Well, I want to pick up a little bit on what Chris started with, and that's about the institution of media and the function it serves in society. And then from there, I want to talk about a few stories because the, that's the frame in which media operates. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's no question that there are people who lie, as Chris pointed out. And what you have with journalism is an institution that has a core value of a commitment to truth. And it's the pursuit of the truth and the inquiry into the truth. So with the story, it's who, what, where, when, why. It's specific information. It can be tested, it can be questioned, it can be verified, and it can be proved because it is the written word. And so there is a reference that can be looked back to. So in, in some ways, it's similar to law and policy, which work in a very specific written uh, area of operation. And so what happens is if there are publications that are not telling the truth and there is evidence to the contrary, their other, the institution itself will critique and check and they will lose credibility and they will lose legitimacy. And it is those news organizations that are bringing valuable information and telling the truth that are actually raising everybody's consciousness. So that's sort of a baseline within journalism. But once you have that, there's still a question of what is going to become a story. So I, get, I live in Los Angeles, uh, I get the Los Angeles Times, and I swear, it seems like every week there's a story about how the national forests are an environmental disaster zone because of all these drugs. And this, essentially what's happened is because of asset forfeiture, the grows have moved into the national forests where no property can be seized. They're often run by Mexican gangs. And they're, you know, they're armed. They're not taking care of the environment. Yes, it is an environmental harm, but the story is never about why we have illegal grow operations. It's just this assumption, at least in Los Angeles, where there's this eco-consciousness that it's, it's just an environmental story. And then you move along and the next week there's a story about uh, the violence in Mexico and how this is all caused by the drugs. And no, it, there isn't this, this recognition that the story may be about that drug prohibition has exported this violence across the border and that they, there are no secure property rights for people who are trucking in drugs and therefore the only way they, they, can, they can secure their, what's theirs is, is with violence because they have no legal protection. So there, there's, there, are, there is discretion within journalism about the way that you are going to tell the story. And then also further, there are questions about what media is doing. They want to tell a story that people are going to be interested in. So I wanted to pick three stories that uh, that in my experience in drug policy were, became very big stories and a little bit about why those things seem to happen the way that they did. So the first one is, uh, rewind a couple of years, we, were, we work with the entertainer Drew Carey uh, at the Reason Foundation and he, we, we launched a video journalism project working with Drew and one of the initial videos that we released was on medical marijuana in California with Drew Carey as the host. Well, this we released the video the week that he became the new host of The Price is Right. And the, this story got picked up by the Associated Press and multiple news channels, and it was printed in local papers pretty much all over the country because here's The Price is Right, which is daytime TV America, and what makes it an interesting story is the host is talking about marijuana, this subject that nobody else can talk about. And so the, the combination of things made it surprising, made it more interesting, and as we would say, it made the story blow up. Because we gen we're generating stories all of the time, we don't know which ones are going to become hits, which are the ones that are gonna spread like wildfire, because more people are interested in hearing those stories. The second story I wanted to talk about that, that actually blew up was the case of a dispensary operator in California named Charlie Lynch. Uh, Charles, if you've met the guy or you know the guy, he's like a choir boy. Uh, Soft-spoken, upstanding. Before he opened his collective, he called the DEA to ask for guidance about how to open a, a dispensary in accord with state law. He contacted the city council, the mayor, of San Luis Obispo attended the ribbon cutting for the dispensary, the president of the Chamber of Commerce. So he was very 
a, a very stable citizen and very conscientious about his community. So when the conflict happened and the raid came and he was facing federal charges, essentially, if, the, if, all, if convicted on all counts, he had the potential to have what would have been a life sentence. This became a significant story because it captured this, that Charlie Lynch, because of who he is and how he worked, was a sympathetic victim of the state. And so that story, it became a bigger story because of that and because he had done the things with the Chamber of Commerce and the mayor. These are things that make people go, wait a second, that seems wrong. And so the story has more impact that way. And the story then got picked up by Al Roker, picked up by others, and part of that was just because of the news cycle and Charlie's trial, by the time it was all finished, he was found guilty of the charges that were placed against him. But then when the judge came to do sentencing, he said, look, this guy operated in good faith, he made these efforts, and his sentence is going to be three, he gave him, a, he didn't even give him the mandatory minimum sentences. He gave him one year and one day for the three guilty convictions far better outcome than was one than was expected when this all began. The most recent story that we were around that just blew up was a story about a, a drug raid in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, I, I don't know if you've seen this video on YouTube, but uh, it's, it's from the perspective of the Columbia, Missouri Police Department and they began just filming what was a standard practice SWAT raid on a home and it's at night. The police go in it turns out a family lives there, a husband, wife, seven-year-old kid, dog, and it's, they're asleep, so the, they break down the doors. It's all per procedure. They shoot the dog the, with the kid there. The, the dad's like, what's going on? They found, I mean, like they found uh, a very small amount of marijuana. It was like nothing was even in the house. They didn't even find anything. So they're going in with guns blazing, with a family there, and, and I really, the, and the video, it blew up. It's up to one, it was like at 1.3 million views on YouTube in the space of a sh few short weeks because it shows so clearly what is going on. And no procedures were, were, were violated. This was by the book. And, it, but it caused the police chief of the town to change the way they're going to operate going forward. He said, I hate the internet because the transparency that the, that the news media provided in this case showed what is the problem. There was no need. There was a time delay between when they got the warrant and when they conducted the raid. It wasn't a high stakes, high speed, we gotta get there fast. They could have gone at any time of day. And in fact, they could have just knocked on the front door. Uh, as I was talking with uh, Neil Franklin, the new head of LEAP, and he said, you know, I was, I was in drug prohibition but from the police side he's like you can't flush that much pot down a toilet that fast if you know if, if you have the warrant and you just show up at the door so so these were three stories that went big but it was because they were individual people and you could see the the victimization or you could see what makes it an interesting story and and as somebody in media that's what we are always looking for is the interesting story that is true, that conveys information in a new way for people. So with that, I'll, I'll say thanks.